Tired of those nasty bites ruining your overland adventures? Well, stay tuned to the top 10 how to deal with biting insects. Hello and welcome back to Nomad Overlanding. My name is Ben. Thank you so much for being here. And I hope that this video finds you well. All right, let's jump right into the information here for today's top 10. So the first one is apply a high quality insect repellent generally with DEET. In my experience, DEET is, while it is a chemical, yes, uh, I do find it to be extremely efficient and helpful to reduce um, exposed skin to mosquito bites, okay? Exposed skin, I'll keep that in mind. Um, one of the things, however, that you, when you use something like DEET, um, in the evening before you go to bed, you want to wash off any area that you have used DEET on just to clean your skin off. So maybe around your neck, or maybe you've put it around your face here or on your arms and hands. You just want to soap and water, get that stuff off you so that you're not sleeping in DEET, okay? It is a chemical, so you want to reduce as much as possible the use of those things when you are out there. But in my experience, being up way up in Northern Ontario, I have found like way up in Northern Ontario, I found that um, DEET is probably the best way to go. I used um, Muscal, I believe, is, the, is the, my go-to DEET product. Um, I'm sure there are others in your local area that you can use, but for me, that was a particularly good one. Number two, wear protective clothing. Now, Obviously, some areas of your skin are going to be exposed. However, others might not be. So, uh, long sleeve shirts, long pants, and high socks in your shoes or boots can be uh, a real game changer for helping uh, your feet and ankles not be entirely exposed and keep some of those biting insects off of you. Um, light colored clothing in this sense is preferable. It's not that dark colored clothing actually uh, attracts more bugs, not at all. All it does is it helps you see the bugs that are on you. Now, there's a couple of other things that I might recommend you might consider getting something like Fjall Raven, like something like that with that kind of heavier material, um, especially when you buy them brand new, they are waterproof or highly water resistant, at least I should say. And so that wax that is built into the pant uh, can act as an additional barrier for things like mosquitoes and black flies. So having something thicker that is harder for the insect to penetrate might be an advantage for you depending on the area that you're in. Also, um, I might suggest getting a bug suit or investing in an, a, a bug suit. Now, there's lots of different kinds out there, of course. Um, but the one that I had in the past, this is up when I was up in Northern Ontario, was actually very, very effective at keeping bugs off, especially at nighttime. Oh my God, especially at nighttime. Um, these were light colored permeable fabric. So mosquitoes could not penetrate the fabric. So it was very dense, but it was light coupled with areas of essentially mosquito mesh that was around you to allow airflow. It also had a built-in zippered hood that you could zip up around you and your face was open with the mesh, but your body is essentially covered completely um, with these sorts of uh, bug, uh, bug suits. It came in two pieces, but there was a pretty good elastic around the waist and around the bottom of the jacket to kind of create a little bit of a seal. 
And really the only exposed places that I had on my body were my hands. And that's where I used my muscle a couple times a day to make sure that it was on there and I wasn't sweating it off, but I was maintaining that chemical layer on my hands in order to uh, provide that extra protection. Now, you could also use a heavier pair of like leather gloves, for example, that you could just use over your hands. Great, no problem. Um, that's another alternative for, for you. Uh, so there's lots of different options in terms of clothing that acts to protect you in these kinds of situations. All right, so I will leave you to decide what is best for you. Number three, choose your campsites wisely. Now, when you are out overlanding or even camping, you're going to want to pay attention to the environment that you come into when you think, hey, I think I might like to camp here. Well, before you actually start unpacking the tent and everything, you might want to have a quick glance around to see what is there. For example, is there a lot of dense vegetation that is very close to your campsite? Is it kind of encroaching, you know, kind of into your camp? Um, if that's the case, that's, a, that's a, a big place where mosquitoes and other biting insects are going to be living until you get there. Because when you arrive, everybody's going to come and say hello. Also, any pools of standing water, uh, stagnant water, whether you're at a pond or uh, puddles, things like that, those are breeding grounds for insects. So if you have a situation where you're in a camp where those things exist, you might consider moving to another location. Also, you can actually elevate your tent if possible. So don't put it in a shallow area, put it up, you know, if there's a, if there's a hill, put it on the top of the hill because that means there's gonna be more airflow and you don't need a lot of wind to knock the mosquitoes out of your camp. So again, it's just logistics, but it can be helpful in that situation. And of course, by all means, your tent should have uh, nice mosquito meshing on it as well. But again, I'm gonna to get to those things in a second. Number four, there are actually insect repellent gear that you can use. So you can actually have clothing and gear that is, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look at the word so I can make sure I get this right, uh, permatherin, permatherin treated clothing and gear. And this is an insecticide that is embedded or applied to tents, clothing, sleeping bags, etc. And these, but these, th this chemical, this insect insecticide um, doesn't just repel the bugs, it kills them. So if you, if you have clothing that you wear specifically for the outdoors, you might consider using that sort of insecticide on your clothing, apply it before you go out, let it sit for a little while so it kind of permeates into the fabric and then go out. That's, that's another option for you uh, as well. Number five, um, set up bug-free zones. Now, this sounds kind of weird, um, and of course, you're not going to get all the bugs out of the area that you're in. But there are things like citronella candles, bug zappers that can be, you know, just battery operated and USB charged, uh, thermocell devices. And if you strategically place those around your camp, um, it might provide a little bit of a barrier around your camp in order to keep some of those mosquitoes at bay. Now, is it gonna be a perfect solution and it's gonna keep 100% of them away? No, but it, if even if it keeps 50 or 60% away, that's pretty good. So it, it can be helpful to set those up. And citronella, citronella has been a hit or miss with me, to be quite honest. I've used it before 
and I've never really had a good experience with them. I've tried it a few times and just let citronella candles up on the ground and up on tables and such and just have them around. It smells nice and I enjoy the smell, but in terms of keeping bugs away and mosquitoes, haven't really, haven't really had much luck with that. It's probably keeping some of them away, but I don't think it's keeping a lot of them away. So all with a grain of salt, again, just my personal experience. Number six, keep your tents and sleeping areas secure. So ensure that your tent is properly sealed, all right? So the, the material is gonna be overlapped, right? It's gonna be overlapped. It's gonna have stitched together. Uh, make sure that stitching is seam sealed. Now, that's gonna be beneficial, of course, if it rains, but it's also gonna be beneficial because it's another added benefit to keeping mosquitoes and other bugs coming into your tent. So making sure that those things are all double checked before you go out. Make sure that your tent does not have holes in it. Make sure that your zippers, you probably have like, you know, one zipper coming down and then kind of one zipper coming across and it kind of meets at a T at the bottom. Make sure that that zipper actually meets properly together and closes. Because if it doesn't, it can leave a little hole where the zippers are not quite closed. It's a perfect doorway for uh, biting insects to come in at nighttime. Also make sure that you're using the fine mesh on your tents. Now most tents will have that of course, but again, you want to double check. That's gonna be on your windows and your doors, of course. And that's great because it's gonna allow circulation and nice cool air to come through while at the same time creating a barrier between you and the insects that are outside. Number seven, um, be mindful of peak activity for biting insects like mosquitoes and black flies. Just as an example, I'm, there's many more of course, but those are the big ones. Um, mosquitoes in particular are more active in dawn and dusk periods of time. What that means is if it's dawn, it means the sun is starting to come up but has not hit the horizon yet, okay? The sun has not come across the lake and now you can see it. It is starting to get light out, but it's not, the sun has not gone past the tree line. The other time, of course, is dusk when the sun has in fact dropped down behind the tree line, but it's not quite perfectly dark yet. Okay, so those are, for mosquitoes at least, those are going to be the two big areas uh, of time that you want to be considering. So plan your activities around those areas. If you know that you're in an area that's gonna have a lot of mosquito activity, especially in the springtime, like June or July, where you get a lot of black flies. Ooh, black flies, those are nasty. Uh, but if you have that, you can, you can make sure that your dinner, for example, is all done and finished, so that if it does get really, really nasty, you can jump into your tent to have a little bit of bug protection. And then once it gets dark, then you can go back out and actually kind of enjoy the evening, okay? Um, now that might not be the case in all areas that you camp. Again, environment plays a lot, of, a lot into this. So keep that in mind, but those dusk dawn times are particularly nasty. Um, okay, number eight. Check for ticks regularly. Now, this is something, in all honesty, I've never had to do. I've never had a tick actually on me, and I've never been bitten by a tick. Um, maybe I've just been lucky, but yeah, I've, you know, black flies, check. Mosquitoes, check. Ticks, never. Not in all of my years of camping in different places in Ontario and up in Northern Ontario and in the UP and in Minnesota and other places that I've gone camping over, over my life. I've never, and, and here in Korea, I've never had a tick bite. 
and I, I feel like I'm fortunate in that regard. Uh, touch wood, I will not have that this summer. But this is especially true when you're, you're hiking and you have long grass, right? It, it might come up to your hips or even higher. Um, and in wooded areas, heavily wooded areas. Now, this is where after you get out of the area, you're going to want to look very carefully at everything on you. And you, if you're with somebody, you want to check them over and they will check you over to make sure that you're getting all of those hard to reach areas. Now, if you do happen to have one in you, and I do mean in you because that's what they do, they burrow underneath your skin, you want to take a pair of finely pointed tweezers and you want to slowly get the tweezers in as close to the skin's surface as possible and without breaking the tick, you don't want to kill the tick, you want to pull the tick out of your skin. And don't kill it while it's on your skin. You want to remove it while it's still alive. Then, boop, it's done, right? Number nine, treat bites properly. So the first thing you want to do is, well, don't scratch. Uh, scratching can aggravate bites in, in a really nasty way and can actually lead to something called empatigo, which means that the bug bite itself has become highly infected and that can make you really, really sick. It can kill you actually if, you, if you're not careful and you don't treat it. So that's in a worst case scenario. However, there are topical creams and other things that you can use in order to manage the itchiness. But the first thing you should do is actually wash the area with soap and water. So just wash the area um, and then apply your, uh, your hydrocortisone, your antihistamine, uh, things like, um, well, any kind of mosquito uh, cream will be fine. I've used uh, Benadryl cream in the past, which I believe was uh, hydrocortisone. And that worked particularly well. Um, I also at times, in occasions where I did have a lot of bites on me and I was going to sleep, um, I actually took Benadryl liquid, which was an antihistamine, and it negated the itchiness at night altogether where I could sleep comfortably. So that's another aspect that you might want to consider when you're going out. If you prefer to keep that sort of thing out of your body, Fine, it's no problem, it's a personal choice, but again, just giving you my own two cents on the matter. Number 10, stay informed about insect-borne diseases. Now, this is really, this is really depending on the area that you're in and what sort of diseases your, your area may encounter. So, um, there are, of course, some fairly nasty diseases out there spread by mosquitoes and other things. Lyme disease, West Nile, malaria, Zika, those are all things that can be treated, uh, that can be transmitted, I should say, by mosquitoes. So if you are overlanding and you happen to be going into a an area of the world where West Nile is particularly virulent, you might want to get treated for that before you go into those locations. Malaria is another disease caused by mosquitoes and you can go through uh, several months before you go into those areas. You can have a kind of a prophylactic regime of, uh, of vaccinations to make sure that you don't get uh, infected by the malaria virus. So there's all sorts of things there. Now in North America, uh, Lyme disease is probably the one thing that we would want to be concerned about the most with, with regards to, with regard to ticks. But of course we have had 
Uh, there have been cases of Zika in certain parts of the United States. So while these 10 tips are not are, are not going to be perfectly sealing you off from biting insects, I do believe that this will be a good step forward and you will reduce that itchy, uncomfortable feeling that they cause. Anyway, this has been from Nomad Overlanding. Thank you very much, everybody, and stay tuned for the next video. Peace.